Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. We're going to be moving on to something interesting this week um, called Sounds from My Inbox. Basically, we're going to be checking out uh, bands that have contacted me and specifically asked for requests to their music. Uh, I think a lot of this is going to be a bit more uh, off the radar. Maybe it's new bands, maybe it's uh, new albums from lesser known bands, uh, anything like that. It's, it's kind of the gist I'm getting from, from what I've seen from the five bands I've chosen. But I'm excited for it. We're going to check this stuff out. Uh, we're going to start off this week with Ghost Iris's Paper Tiger. Now, I don't know about you guys, I've never heard of this band before. Um, right here in the description, they have a hashtag metalcore, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a metalcore fan. Um, and it premiered January 15th, which was just last week. So let's get into this. Let's see what's up. Ghost Iris's Paper Tiger. So he started off with some unique uh, accented notes that gave it uh, an off kilter time signature feel, but it wasn't 4 4 and moved back into a very straight 4 4. Excellent bass prominence. Just going in hard. Not even a second to breathe yet. Almost feels like halftime, but I think it's just the uh, drums that are giving more space. Oh, are we going to a lighter section? Really interesting uh, editing here. No, we are not. <laughs> Really cool pans, uh, call and response. So it's really interesting, I don't think the tempo has changed at all, but it continues to feel like they enter these uh, halftime feels. And it's done entirely by the drums, the guitar and bass aren't really changing up their rhythmic uh, choice. Right. So, Ghost Iris. That was um not what I think of when I think of metalcore. Uh, so that was an interesting surprise for me. When I think of metalcore, I think of like uh, Bullet for My Valentine, which sort of mixes like heavier metal aspects with popular rock stuff. Like we get some uh popular. Uh, vocal styles, usually for choruses, 
Um, that's that's kind of what I think metalcore is. Maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience with metalcore, uh, so maybe I'm just maybe my definition's just off there. Uh, this to me was yeah, <laughs> just not what I was expecting. Um, so yeah, we have very harsh vocals all throughout. Uh, I tried my best to uh to kind of not tone them out but look past them because i think they were very dominant in the mix um so i was really trying to check out what was going on in the drums and guitars uh because as most of you know that vocal style just isn't really for me uh i dig it on on sort of um smaller sections uh but i, I definitely need it contrasted with something a little more popular or at least a little more melodic um sort of the back and forth. I can appreciate it as it provides context for the cleans or where the cleans provide context for it. Not so much something that takes up the whole song, but that's just a personal taste. You guys know uh, nothing I ever say is set in stone or just hard rules or anything like that. Um, as with any sort of review, even if it is uh, an analytic reaction, it's all still personal information. This is just how the song hits me and what I personally get out of it. So. Yeah, the vocals were just not my cup of tea, but I think they were very well done, and there was a lot of uh, um, variety. Even though it was all harsh vocals, we saw some fries, we saw some harsh, uh, some growls, we saw sort of like a mixed harsh and uh, a mixed fry and growl, um, and maybe even some heavily distorted cleans. Uh, the dude actually has a little bit of a repertoire as far as textures go with his vocal work. So that was pretty impressive. Um, I do like this. This really stuck out to me. I mentioned a couple of times that it felt like we were going into a halftime feel, but we never actually did. Uh, that it was usually just the guitars providing extra space. They would play half as many notes. But the rest of the band was still, for the most part, playing what they were playing before the drums cut to their halftime feel. Um, and it always made me feel like the tempo had shifted. But every time it did, you know, I, I really hone in. I, I listen to it uh, more intently as far as, uh, you know, tempo goes. And I don't think the tempo changes at all through this song, which uh, led me to really focus in on some of these sections where the drums opened up a bit and provided space for everything else to shine, and I noticed an interesting pattern. Whenever the drums added notes, so in, if they were playing quarters, they would add, you know, eighths. Uh, when they added notes and made it, the tempo feel faster, the guitars and bass usually removed notes, and vice versa is true. When the drums pulled out, and opened up, usually the guitars and bass were playing more notes. Maybe not necessarily more notes in response, but they were always playing faster notes. It's not like everybody decided we're going to play on the beat and every instrument is just dropping quarters. Um, there's always somebody counteracting uh, another instrument's decision uh, rhythmically. So it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know if that was done on purpose. Maybe that's just uh, you know, an unconscious style of the band that they, they just happened upon enjoying that. Maybe it's just how the song came, came together. I don't know, but it's just a really interesting pattern. I noticed, uh, going through this one. Uh, what else? There is a lot of, uh, I, I started out really trying to analyze what was going on in the music. And, um, again, I, I want to reiterate to anybody who's new here, I don't say any of this negatively, right? Uh, every tool in the toolbox of making music uh, is valid and viable. You just need to know when and how to use it. So when I say that the song is musically simplistic, that's not a bad thing. It's not a slight against the song. Uh, it's just a fact. One of the tools they used was to write simple and effective music. And what I mean by that, is um, a lot of the music tends to sit around the same chords and moreover the same notes and note relationships. However, uh, oh, also we see a recurring note, uh, notif, uh, sorry, motif of um, pedal notes. We see pedal notes all throughout this song uh, in the guitar work. Uh, but 
there's a lot of textural changes, or not textural change, textural work. The notes and the sounds that are chosen for each section, as far as what I hear the guitar and bass doing, is not so much about creating uh, beautiful music or creating, uh, you know, interesting chord relationships or chord progressions or picking notes, uh, you know, outside of a chord to really color that section of the song. Um, a lot of what's going on here is picking the sound that just sounds best for the section. Um, sometimes that means repeating the same note and just like hammering in maybe an open chord. Uh, maybe it means alternating between two notes or a little bit of a run or pedal notes with a little run after it. But it's always about the energy that's provided from the sound, not necessarily how the sound works within theory. And, uh, you know, we've seen that uh, a few times in the past. A lot of requests on this channel are actually for songs that are a bit uh, more complex musically. So I don't think we've actually seen a lot of, if this is metalcore, we have not seen a lot of metalcore on the channel uh, with music that really emphasizes this. So I don't think I've really had a chance to talk about this before. But it's a completely different uh, type of music writing than I am used to. Uh, actually, I think we have talked about this before because I brought up Ghost Train, Eric Whitaker's Ghost Train, which is a, a modern classical composition where the music is written not because of how the notes sound together or, or writing something beautiful, but because of how they sound, the textures and timbres they're creating. Uh, almost the entire first um, movement of Ghost Train is the is a bunch of instruments coming together to sound like a train pulling into the st I think it's pulling into the station. I'm trying to it's been a long time since I've heard Ghost Train, but I think the first movement is a train pulling in. Um and uh, the woodwinds and the brass and the the percussion section are all working together to create the chugging and the whistle and and just the sound of a train pulling in. And um, it's just, it's a really fascinating way to write music that I'm personally just not a comp, uh, 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 not a comp, oh man, uh, I'm not accustomed to as a composer. And also I just don't listen to that much music uh, in that vein, or at least I don't critically listen to music in that vein. I do listen to a lot of music that is more about texture than theory. Um but I, it's more, it's more of my casual catalog. It's the stuff I, I just check out when I'm wanting to chill to some music, uh, and I, I rarely think about it critically, and I probably should. There's a lot of music after doing Pop Week last week that I realize I have never critically listened to, um, and I think stuff like this is something I should be getting into and really analyzing how notes and and portions of songs are dedicated to creating, um you know, a feeling, not necessarily an emotion, but maybe like a texture that can be felt in the bones. Like it's just heavy. This song specific, specifically is heavy, gritty. It's punchy. Every bit of it is punchy. Every, every bit of it is it's just heavy and crunchy. And, uh, yeah. So I'm glad that for whatever reason on this song, uh, it's, it's kind of brought me to this corner of, uh, thinking of thought to uh to kind of come to that conclusion and maybe possibly get me to think about some stuff critically that i have not in the past um so yeah cool stuff also i i gotta love any band that gives this, the bass some spotlight those two i think they were pre-verses um i don't know i actually couldn't follow the structure of the song a lot of it sound very similar to me so other than the, uh, I mean, <laughs> there are two sections, the, the, the bass emphasis section, which happened twice, and then sort of the spacey guitar, highly compressed section. I was like, oh, are we going somewhere a little more mild? And then we didn't. Uh, those two sections stand out for me, but everything else sounds very similar to me. I didn't really notice any major changes in the music that would denotate some sort of shift in uh, section. So it's really interesting that they, they just kind of wrote a three-minute song that for the most part is is the same thing, but constantly moving. Like, I wouldn't say that they were playing the same ideas over and over, like when we checked out uh, Nostalgia. 
When we checked out Nostalgia last week, uh, the only reason I bring it up is because it's like the nearest, the, the most recent one I can think of. Um, you know, from start to finish, that was pretty much the same song. Um, but they don't do that here. Like, I can hear different ideas, but I don't hear different sections, if that makes any sense. There's no big break and change in momentum or in chord progression or in, you know, any big break that would change up the sound of the song. So, yeah. All right, so that's Ghost Iris's Paper Tiger. Um, as usual, I will post a link to the video in the description, um, as well as uh, any other pertinent information. If I can find a, a band camp or something for them, I'll make sure that goes down there. For anybody interested in checking more of this stuff out. All right, that wraps this one up. Those are my thoughts, though. Hit me up with your thoughts. Comment, you know, if you enjoyed this or not. Uh, if there's any things that I talked about that maybe got you thinking and you want to start a conversation, definitely drop it down in the comments. Um, there's a description box above that. Like I said, there's going to be some information for Ghost Iris in there as long, or as well as some information for the channel if you're interested in anything adjacent, such as the Patreon campaign or the Discord server. Uh, and then, of course, like, subscribe, and a bell to ring all the YouTube nonsense. Uh, so yeah, that wraps this one up. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual, with another sound from my inbox. All right, until then, you guys take care, stay safe, keep being awesome, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.